Hello, everybody. Um, good to see all of my friends. MC, hi, how are you? Um, Dr. Roseboom, like to do a little shout out to you. You and um, Anthony, you should know Dr. Roseboom works at Mars Hill. Uh huh. And we've been working with him and Lisa Watchman and Ryan Bell, and they this semester in COVID had their highest retention in 15 years, an increase of 4%. And they worked their tail off to get that. They worked all summer long to get it. So um, you know, we, we talk about relationships. And if you were a good school or a good business before COVID, you're probably a good school and good business after COVID. Uh, you don't change during a crisis. You either, yeah. either shows your weaknesses or shows your strengths. So he had a good team before COVID. And he that's did. why right. he absolutely did. Debbie, good to see you. She's from Rochester and um, is very excited about being able to make an impact on retention. I just, like I always say, I'm always happy to see all of my friends joining, all of our clients. Anthony, we were just saying it has been such a long time. It's been a long time, my friend. I'm sure there's a song, I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere, but it's been I'm a long sure time. I'm sure there is. But uh, in, 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 COVID, in COVID years, it's been a second. That is very true. And the reason we decided to, to wait a month is because as I was talking to all of my clients, they're like, we really love your show. We really want to join you. We cannot right now because we are tired and we have right. other things to do. So right. we took a little we, bit we, of a break. As I say, they're tra changing a tire as the car's moving. That's exactly right. That's right. exactly right. Okay. Um, so let's have our fun first. Yeah. I, I always look forward to this part. <laughs> okay. 20 questions. Oh, we're doing 20 questions again. Okay. Yeah, 20 questions. And then I have I some I, I, mean, I have some pictures for you too. Okay. Oh boy. Are you, I, I know I know for sure which one you picked up from my Instagram late recently. You I know do? For sure. I think I do. Let's okay. see. Okay. Well, I have four or five different ones. So we'll right. we'll see what you think. Let, okay. Let, 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 go ahead. So 20 questions. Mm -hmm. Um, your first instinct, and I only have 19 again this time. Okay. Okay. Are you a spender or a saver? One more time. I didn't hear you. A spender or a saver? Oh, a saver. A saver. Um, besides New York City, what is your favorite city? Rome. What is your spirit animal? A tiger. Spaghetti or carbonara? Spaghetti. Um, today is National Ice Cream Day, which you need to know. It's, I know that's a very important day for you. What is the best? and the worst flavor of ice cream? Chocolate best, strawberry worst. Wow, that is a surprise to me, okay. What is your dream car? Uh, convertible Bentley. Okay, so I asked you last time, what job would you not wanna do? And you said roofer, but what job would you be terrible at? Um, what job would I be terrible at? Um, Anything that required me to uh, pay attention and take orders. <laughs> I did that for five years in the military. You're like, I'm out. I'm not <laughs> and I was, doing it anymore. And I was really good. I said, what, what I would be terrible at is um, uh, probably dishwasher. Because I started as a dishwasher and I was really good at it, but I always wanted to know what was going on with the customers. So I was always in trouble because I was like always sneaking out steak. of the <laughs> I was always I was eating the, the hot bread and looking at the clients and saying, I want to be in the I want to be there. So I <laughs> loved washing dishes, but I, I'm bad at it because I needed more. You needed people, yeah. Okay. What is the worst household chore? Cleaning the fans. Oh. And the blinds. That is a, yes, that is a pretty bad one. Okay, dogs or cats? Dogs. Who, this is going to be hard, I think. Who is the most fascinating person you have ever met? Joe Rogan. Oh, that wasn't hard at all. Um, what are you kind of obsessed with these days? Mental health. True. Pepsi or Coke? No Pepsi, Coke. Coke? No Coke, Pepsi. Pepsi. Remember the Saturday Night Live skit? No Coke Pepsi? No. You know? I, You're I so know. young. You're so young. <laughs> You're so young. Matt remembers it. Matt knows he, what He might about. remember it. He, he's a little bit older than I am. No, no Coke Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to eliminate the hospitality industry, but what could you do a 40-minute presentation on with no preparation? 
Personal branding. Okay. Mountain or beach? Beach. If there were Olympics for an everyday activity, what activity could you meddle in? Aggressiveness. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, what is your greatest fear? Um, I'm not going to tell you because I'm so afraid that it'll come true. I'm not tell you. <laughs> okay, don't tell me. What is your favorite restaurant? Um, Noble 57 in Manhattan. Okay. What is something everyone should do, should do at least once in their lifetime? Ski the Swiss Alps. Ooh, I love that. Okay, and the last one is, if you could give everyone just one piece of advice, what would it be? Everything changes. Anthony, that's a good one. I might just have to write that on our bulletin board. Everything changes. It's great. Okay, are you ready for our pictures? <laughs> wow, what a beautiful so, family. Who are we looking let at? Me just, let me just humiliate myself first. Okay, this that's is you. My this is girl. me. This is when um, rooster bangs and curly hair were, were in. So I have a, a perm and curly but you had a picture on your Instagram recently. I knew, I, I, was like, like, <laughs> I was like, if you don't grab that picture, you're not worth your salt. <laughs> I just feel okay. like we look similar. So let me, let me explain that. Uh, well, let me say, let me say, let me say. Don't you uh, think like it's oh, the wow. same Oh, hair. you do? Oh my God. You're a lot prettier then. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, the hair. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I was a little kid and I was Halloween and my mother said, I'm gonna dress you as a girl. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't care. My mom wanted to dress me as a girl. She, my mother was beautiful, and she always was just perfectly dressed. And so she put a little dot here. She put the, her wig on and makeup, and uh, I was a, I was pretty good. As, as I said on Instagram, uh, RuPaul has nothing on me. Yeah, I thought you were a pretty attractive woman. Good yeah, work. I found that. I found that because I'm going through my garage the last couple of days, and I found it in my garage. And I said, wow, I thought I lost that. I thought I, have, I haven't seen that in years. And um, yeah, so. Anyway. Ah. So these other two, I have one more picture that I want to show you because I think it's such a great foil. Um, this is you when you were in the military and I'm going to give everybody a minute to see if they can spot you. Oh, just look for the ears, man. It'll be easy. <laughs> so here is your, all, all of these people. Oh, and there I am. There it is. That's look great. At, you, know, you know what's interesting? Look at us. We all have this. We look like the same person. We all have the same yeah. look. We all look miserable and focused. <laughs> Which I think is that's a good summary. We're miserable and focused. I love it. Um, okay, so let me talk about what we're going to do today. We want to talk about the State of the Union. As always, we want to talk about how we have found ourselves running a marathon um, and how we can run a good race. And then we, we want to spend some time on stamina and how we can use our current circumstances to make sure we're changing things. The State of the Union, so last time we met was August 24th. You can see um, kind of wh where everybody was in terms of fully in person, primarily in person. Um, when I pulled this this morning, basically the summary is that totally um, online or, uh, sorry, fully online or partially online has gone up 11%. So we have 11% of schools who have moved to either fully or partially online. And then 4% of schools have gone down um, in terms of in-person. So we're just still having kind of a lot of shuffling, which is really interesting because we're pretty far into the, um, into the semester, but we're still trying to figure out kind of what's going on and, and what's the best way that we can, can do uh, online education for our schools. Yeah, the city of New York don't even have the kids in school yet. They're still not in school. Uh, unless the pre-K kindergarten, uh, I think they started today or something, but they're still not in school because it's a cluster. They just haven't figured it out. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because that's right. In the Northeast, they don't start until late September, like September right? And then 13th, I think they delayed. September 13th, yeah. Usually, typically September, like second week in September. Yeah, and then September they've kind of delayed right. a little bit. And right. yeah. So um, there's still just a lot of kind of shaking out of that and trying to figure um, as I was getting ready to, to um, talk about stamina, I realized that really we have all, we're all running a marathon that we did not expect started in March. We're in our seventh month of this marathon. Um, I have this idea of like how you run a marathon, which is you prepare 
we none of us were able to prepare because it just came on instantly so i kind of feel like we're running a marathon in flip-flops <laughs> and then also we have like kind of the apocalypse going on where there's dinosaurs chasing us in this marathon that we didn't expect to run and then also we have to be cheerleaders for each other so it's like as if the marathon wasn't bad enough we're in flip-flops with the dinosaurs chasing us plus we have to be really cheerful about it right and, and the people in charge of the marathon are going in different directions. Yeah, that's right. And we didn't have a choice and we don't know when it's going to end and right. we have no control over it. And it just feels very overwhelming. And I want to get to the place where we talk about stamina, but I, I think it's really useful for us to just articulate. I mean, I have never wanted to run a marathon in my life and yet I am. And a lot of people are feeling like, oh my gosh, without preparation, and with all of these really difficult things, we find ourselves in this long distance um, run that we didn't see coming at all. Um, the other thing I'll say is that I can imagine in a marathon that the beginning is exciting, which I think we had in the beginning as we're trying to make these adjustments. And then the end is like this last push, but we are in the middle. I don't know where in the middle, but we are starting to feel the where uh, one foot, just one foot in front of the other for seven months, just one foot in front of the other. Right. So, um, I don't know if you have anything that you want to say about that specifically. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it feels overwhelming. Well, Do you know this movie? Of course, Casablanca. Or is that, no, Jungle, Jungle. Uh, this is, is African it? Queen. Or African Queen, right. Okay. And you remember, this is where they've like pulled it through the jungle and they lay down to die and then the camera pans out and it's like they're right near the canal they're about to go into to open water and so i think what's hard for us is we don't know how close we right. are to the end yeah. i haven't seen that movie in a long time but yes um well first of all when are you running your marathon when are you running your marathon oh i'm never no i i'm not running a marathon oh i, I thought, mean I'm, I, thought, I thought you said you were preparing for a marathon no 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 i said oh. if we we're going to be prepared oh, okay. for a marathon all right, so no, so no. I, 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 you may or may not know. I did run a marathon. I don't know if we talked about that. You did? Yeah, yeah. Which, the New York one or what, Boston? New York one, right after September 11th, uh, after, um, my, after, after the towers came down in 2001. And, and wow. so it's interesting you used the analogy of a marathon um, because I woke up in May and decided I wanted to run a marathon because I remember paralyzed. I don't want to be watching TV and watching people run a marathon, and I couldn't do it. So I literally did it simply because I wanted to because I had legs. So I was like, I'm going to run a marathon and I'm not a runner. I haven't run a mile since I, you know, I work out, but I don't really do long distance running. So anyway, I prepared as I do, I crammed and, um, I made it through and the first mile was the toughest kind of like our first mile in this whole thing. It was, it was yeah. tough. It's like, what's going on? Cause my body was like, I've trained pretty good and my body's still like, man, this is rough. So the first one to three miles was kind of tough. And then from three miles to, I'd say about 12 miles, I did great. I was flying. And then from 12 miles to 18 miles, I was exactly that. I was like, okay, I'm in a little pain. This is a little crazy. I haven't hit a wall yet, man. Just bear down. The one guy just took a knee and he just decided not to run. He was literally on his knees. He couldn't run anymore. He pulled something out. Um, and like, I saw a couple of people go down. And most people finish it. And I was just like, I'm not going to be that person that goes down. So I kept on focus, kept on focus. And then about the 18th mile, um, I hit the wall and it just splattered me. Um, but again, that adrenaline of it's almost to the end. I can't give up now got me. But from, from, I think you're right. I think from that the three to 12 miles or whatever it was, that was the, the time where I needed to fully concentrate And the 18th miles where I just got beat in the head with a bat. Yeah. Um, with the wall, but the motivation of it, I'm almost there, got me through. That's so right. then I was just talking to my, the guy I work out with and I asked him, I said, Hey, why don't we run a marathon together? And he said, Anthony, why would you want to run a marathon? <laughs> you basically run far away from where you are. Don't you want to be where you are? And I go, what? I just want to run a marathon. I don't even know what the hell that means. Yeah. He goes, what are you running away from? Why do you have to run? You don't have to run. And I said, can you run a marathon? And I still don't understand what he meant. I, I go, can you, this was last week. I go, can you run a marathon? He goes, absolutely. He goes, right now you want to run a marathon? I can absolutely run 26.2 miles right this second. I go, are you kidding me? He goes, no, because it's a mindset. And I keep my body ready. My body's always ready. I don't run. I don't like running, but I can run. I can run a marathon right now. If you say go, I guarantee you'll come across that finish line. 
it may not be in three hours, but I'll finish the, the marathon. And I think that that's really good analogy for life. You know, it's like, I don't know when the marathon's coming. I don't know when the end's coming, but I'm ready for it. I'm always ready for it. I'm always ready for the marathon. I'm always ready for, and, and I, I've said probably before, why not us? Why not now? Why not this generation? Why not when I'm on this planet? Why should my grandchildren take something on that maybe we, we not, maybe, maybe not be able to help them with? Now we can maybe help them if God forbid when we're older, it happens. Yeah. So why not me? I've always been that person. So, so the marathon is, you shouldn't have to prepare for the marathon. You should be preparing for the marathon your whole life. Like you should be working out. You should be uh, physically fit. You should be mentally healthy. You should be, you should have your ring gear, right? Right? And, and, yeah. and you, know what, you know what this the secret to the marathon was? I, n I never forgot this. I worked into the running store. Never ran a marathon. I go, hey, here's my credit card. Just sell me crap. Just, what do uh, I need? Yeah. And you know what the secret was? What? Vaseline for your nipples. <laughs> Anthony, I was just telling my coworker about this and she thought I was making it up. Why are you a runner? I mean, do you do? No, I was doing research about running yeah. marathons, and I was like, "Hey, this is a really important part." Yeah. And she's like, "I've never heard of this before." And I'm so sensitive, and I'm so like, I don't want to be in pain when I'm running the marathon. So, like, I got 16 jars of Vaseline, so I never had that You're problem like covered. <laughs> because I my nipples and everything else was covered. Yeah, and, and and but that's that that so so my point being is the thing you don't think about is the thing that could take you down. So yeah. something like the rubbing of your nipple on your shirt, and especially if you're a woman, you don't want to run a marathon, you know, nude. Yeah. So without you, you, you take your shirt off and you're running and, and as it's probably more painful. So, so you, I'm always, I always try to be prepared for the thing that I'm not expecting, you know, the unexpected detail. I'm always trying right. to understand the unexpected detail, always trying. So if you're in full, if, if you don't have to worry, like if you run a marathon, right? So I'm going to run a marathon, but if you're 400 pounds and out of shape, you have to really do a lot of work just to get to the point where you can run the marathon. That's okay. Right. So when I said I wanted to run a marathon, I was in pretty good shape and I was eating healthy. So I was okay. Now I've just got to focus on what is at hand. When you're running, <laughs> when you're coming into COVID and, and you're not ready as a human financially or mentally or whatever, and you hit COVID, all the things that you have to get prepared to deal with COVID is so much worse because you weren't prepared for life. So That's I think- right. And I love, I really like the framing. So we're always talking about punctuation. And what you just said is like, if you punctuate it with like the start of this marathon and seven months later, and wow, that's really hard, then that's one thing. But really what we're talking about is, um, you said this morning, like there are COVID problems and there are problem problems, right? And so if you have problem problems, when you have to start mar running that marathon, those are going to become more and more evident let's take a longer view and talk about this as we want to run a good race. We want but, to, but, 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 but I, life. I want to interject the, the, the client you were just talking about, um, the, the university that, that increased their, um, retention. Yeah. They were prepared to run the race. Right, they, right. they, they weren't preparing for COVID. They were prepared for COVID and say, Oh, I didn't know this was coming. But okay, we're prepared because we do it well every day. We're tight every day. We, we care about our people. We care about our, our institution every day. And now, yeah, this is a big challenge. Now, all of a sudden, like if you're running a marathon and you didn't realize you were running um, a hilly marathon, you know, there's, there's marathons that have a lot of hills. You're like, oh, I'm ready for the marathon, but I, didn't, I wasn't ready for these hills. But if you're prepared, you'll, you'll figure it out. There's an extra challenge in, challenge in there, right? Um, Okay, I want to talk about one of your um, episodes of Hotel Impossible because it makes me think of both running a race and uh, Alpenhof Lodge. I love those people. This is my most favorite episode. It's season two, um, episode twelve. I've been watching this show like a couple of times over the last couple of days because I'm hoping I can get through it without crying because oh, I cry impossible. every every time I watch it. I at least in three different places, I cry. If you can get through that show without watching, you're not a human being. This family is so precious. So let me, let me just talk about, this is um, in Mammoth, California. It's a ski resort. Um, they are literally next, like, like ski into the lodge. This Basically. man, yeah, Robert has had this property. I think it's for 40 years or something like that. He is the most precious 
hardworking, wants to provide for his family. You're going to make me cry, man. <laughs> he was precious. So Anthony, I, here are some quotes. So here's oh, where I, 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 you know what? I can, I can tell you the quotes off the top of my head. That's how much I love this family. So I give, here, my, I give my boys work. I don't want to leave them a bunch of money. I want to leave them a bunch of work. work. It's better. I love him. That, that, that just like, makes your mouth open. Like, I don't want to leave money. I want to leave them work. It's like, I, I, like, I love you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so he said, this property is worth millions and millions of dollars. You know why I didn't sell it? Because I don't want to give my kids money. It's evil. Work is better. The other thing he said that made me cry was, and I was thinking about this in terms of um, the, the span of your life and how you run a good race. And, and what he needed was for somebody to relieve him and say, you've done a great job, go, go, right? So he said, over the years, you try and you try and you work and you work. And now I think back and where's the time gone? Now I'm an old man, to which you were very kind to him. And you said, I you're said, an, you're older an older man. man. <laughs> you're an older I, man. I can quote this show verbatim. He's, I, I love him. And the other thing, the other quote that I really love that I cry every time is when you say to the family, you're sitting with the family and you're explaining like, hey, we're going to make this better. It's time for him oh, to Oh, I exactly know what you're going to say right now. You said, this hotel is going to be in your family a long time and it's going to put a lot of your grandkids through college. And you know why? You did your job and you're done. And now and it's he, time to take your grandchildren for ice cream. Yeah. And the girl and his sister, his daughter-in-law said, and uh, whatever amount of money he was going to get. $625,000. Yeah, it's going to be, that's a lot of ice cream. That's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> I love this family so much. And he is such the epitome of he's running his good race for his family. And what you did for him was to say, hey, you did a great job. You're done. Go enjoy. Go be with your kids. You can drive your tractor whenever you want to. <laughs> you see my face in that picture? Like, like. I literally, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I had to push my cameraman away because I had a breakdown because my dad died when I was young. And when the son said to me, I don't know if you're going to talk about this. When the son said to me, Anthony, thank you for doing this. Thank you for letting him hand the keys over to us. And I say, you're welcome. He goes, I thought this would happen over a casket. Yeah. I lost it because my dad died. And I think about his casket all the time. I wasn't even there because I was only two. And that was really emotional. And, and when I, this is my favorite type of business or show. Whether I'm running a hotel um, in my private life or whether I'm doing it on TV, my favorite type of show is, is not when I'm upset with people, is when they understand that my heart is good. And like you saw throughout this entire show, if you ever really wanted to know my personality, if you never met me, never watched the show, if you ever wanted to know who I am as a human being, this is the show that has my DNA all over it. That's because exactly he's a tough right, right. guy, comes in as a tough guy, and then at the end, he, me and him were best friends. When we left each other, I'm telling you, like I never have dinner with the clients after I just leave. And I was like, good luck, God bless you. And I was here for you. You know, now you have to do it. I never, it's, it's, it's a rule. I don't have dinner with the clients. I leave. And he says, we want to have a family dinner with you. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And I was hesitant, but oh. I'll do it. When we said goodbye to each other, we, we like, like if you were sending your kid off to college, we were both like hysterical crying. And we, when we left, we're like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. Well, I will tell you that this is the show where I was just like, I love Anthony. Oh, thank you. you in that entire show, the gift that you gave them to say, you did a great job. Let your kids do what they're ready to do. And also they were a little bit estranged in the beginning. Like there was just a lot of conflict oh. because they didn't understand why the dad was doing all that. And when you said to him, so he has a picture of Anthony or of um, Arnold, Schwarzenegger Arnold Schwarzenegger in his office. And when you were like, hey, that's really impressive. You built something very impressive. He was like, oh, oh, I did it. Like I came here to provide for my family and I, you're telling me I did it. You know, right. so. Yeah. And he, I remember when the kids said they did understand what the problem was. The problem was he saw them as little children. And right. what I saw them as, and, and anybody that knows me knows I wouldn't give the, I wouldn't allow them to take over the hotel if they weren't good at what they were doing. Their wives were impressive yeah. ladies. They were impressive restaurateurs that they were running a restaurant. They were ready to take it over. And 
And I, I know that feeling with my own kids. It's like, we're here, dad. Like we've showed you, we've proven you. Like what, like what else do we have to do to get permission to do whatever it, it is? So yeah. the, 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 the kids weren't angry. They were just like, we did it. Like right. there's good people yeah. with good families. We're running a restaurant that's successful. We accomplished and proved to you that we're not idiots. We did it, dad. What yeah. are we waiting for? And so when I came into that situation, again, not knowing anything, um, I immediately said, good people, strong guy. I got this guy. Like, I remember my director yeah. said, he'll never hand it over. I said, dude, I got him. Five minutes, I, I knew I had him. <laughs> I knew I had him because there was something soft and sweet about him. And anytime you have somebody that is soft and sweet but tough, I got him. Like, and he, he, working like, for the right reasons, right? right? And that's why. Like, you just had to speak to his value and say, right. You've worked super hard and you did it. And so right. Right. And value now. him. And, and if he didn't do a good job and he was disrespectful to his employees and disrespectful to his team, I wouldn't say that he did it in the sense of you did it your way for a long time. Like, what else do you want out of this? Like you right. milk the cow. There's no more milk. For <laughs> right. right. We're going to call this a success and we're going to move on. Yeah. I love that. Well, I do think, the context of run a good race your whole life, even though it's hard. And, and this, what we're talking about right now is this big, but with COVID, but we're actually talking about, you said something today about your basket of days. Will you explain what that means? When you put it in perspective and not to be morbid, right? We, we, you know, the poem live your dash and in the middle, you know, beginning and end is the day you were born the day on your gravestone, the day you were born the day you end the only dates on your gravestone, and then there's a dash in between. Well, those dash, that dash is really filled of your days. Those are your days that you have on this earth and what you did with those days. So if I live to 85, maybe I have 10,000 more days left. So every time I wake up, I take another, uh, and I take another day out of my basket. Um, I want every one of those days. I don't want 9,985. I want 10,000 days because right. if I live to 85 or 95, whatever it is, I don't want to waste those days. So what do I have to do to run the marathon? I have to take care of myself. I have to see the doctor. I have to do what I need to do. I got to be good to myself. I got to be good to my family and I got to save my money. Right. Yeah. So, so it, it, every one of those days will be worth living. If you have the stamina, that was, that was freaky. If you, <laughs> if you have the stamina to really take care of it, because Every day when we talked about this last time, like I try to give myself happiness, either it be an ice cream or whether it be walk on the beach or whether it be just talk to my kids. One of my daughters, my, my freshman who just went to, um, uh, to college, she actually FaceTimes me at night. My other two never FaceTime me. And it's like, dad, what are you doing? How was your day? I'm like, what? You really care about my day? So, so awesome. the stamina is those moments, right? COVID's going to be here. Stupid politicians are going to be here. Um, challenges. And one of the things I want to say, and I think this is really appropriate, especially for, this, for our audience, is it's not their fault. It's not the school's fault. So the, the teachers and the students and the people who are very um, upset with the way maybe some schools are going about it, listen, like you said, they weren't prepared for it. Even the most prepared people, it's really tough. So all you're seeing is the weaknesses that they could hide before come to the forefront. So you got to give people time. The people like if you have a great school that's doing great now, they were a great school before. So the weaker schools or the people that really weren't prepared really for the day to day, you got to give them a break because it, it's not their fault. They don't want to be in a situation. And also they're dealing with their own family. So one of the things I try to really tell people that my kids in college, so I, I deal with it every day is we got to give everybody a break. The kids a break, everybody a break. Like my daughter the other day is like, you know what? It's really hard for me to concentrate, you know, learning on my bed. Like I'm in college, but half of my classes are online. And I didn't give her any crap. I was like, babe, do your best. What am I going to do? Right. That's right. And the idea that we will not give up seven months of our days in our basket because we're in the middle of this difficult situation, because that's where that's an added challenge for us. We do find ourselves there, and the adjustment. And I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think in retrospect, when you look back at it after seven months, a year, two years, whatever long the stamp thing's going to happen, is you want to be proud of yourself. You want to be proud of how you handle it in front of your children, in front of your students, in front of your faculty. You want to be proud of that person. And that's when, when I have get down on myself and, I, and I'm like not feeling it, 
I'm like, the day that happens where we're like, this is in the rear view mirror, hopefully, um, I want to look back and say, hey, kid, you did a pretty damn good job yeah. there. You know, and I think that's really important. You want to be proud of yourself. You don't want to, you don't want to let your weakness take over. Because once your weakness takes over, and then when you're out of this, you can deny that you, you were weakened. You can deny that you were short with your family. You can deny that you screwed up, um, which most people do. Um, or you can acknowledge it and get better. Or you can say, hey, when I saw my weakness, I fixed my weakness. I, I asked for help. I asked people around me for help. And I'm proud of the way I handled this. And that's what we want to be. We want to be proud of the way we got our family and our friends and everybody around us, including ourselves through this. And you can only do the best you can do. So don't, don't be so hard on yourselves. I think we're all too damn hard on ourselves. Yeah. I really love what you're saying because I was trying to think about how do you develop um, stamina? And I think the only way that you develop stamina is you, so there's first of all a piece where you don't stop, you just keep going. You're just gonna keep going. But then the way that you develop that is that you tie it to a value that's important to you. And what you just said is like, hey, I wanna be proud of myself. So when I wake up in the morning, even though it's hard and I've gotta put my foot in front of, keep putting my feet in front of the other, the value that I'm driving towards is I want to be really proud of myself or, I mean, I don't know what motivates, but everybody's motivated by different things, right? But the negotiation that you do where you say, if I do these things today, I will feel proud of myself at the end of the day, or I do this work because I love students and I want to help them be successful. I'm thinking about your wife teaching pre-K online. The way that she has stamina to do that is that she's tied it to a value. She said, I love these kids. I'm invested in them. I want them to have a great school year. So I'm just going to keep doing what I have to do so that that's going to be their experience. And if you try to will yourself to do a thing without tying it to a, something that's important, I want to be proud. I want to help students. I want to make an impact for good. Whatever that is, I want to help my industry. I don't think that you can will yourself enough without that value to be able to. I think that's real. I think that's an outstanding point. A hundred percent. You know, you're not doing it. Like the, 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 I think the saddest thing in the world is to work towards a goal that just satisfies your needs. Right. So my marathon was satisfying my need for accomplishment but I also had a little, I had twin daughters that were maybe a year old and I did it for them. I did it. I tied it to the value of, I can tell them I got up one morning, said I'm going to run a marathon. And then I never ran a marathon again right. uh, because I, I willed myself to do it. And yeah. so, so I think if you're just doing things for yourself, totally, but you're exactly right. Like I was, I was videoing my, my wife hates pictures. That's why you don't see any pictures of her online. She hates pictures and stuff and videos. So I videoed her when she wasn't looking of her teaching the kids and I sent it to my daughters and my daughter's like, she's so adorable. <laughs> because they, they saw her mother, their mother in a different view yes. and saw her working really, really hard. She's working harder than she's ever worked in her life. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, that idea that stamina is a mindset that you just make up your mind and you say, this is the thing I value, value and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to march towards it. And there are going to be times where I'm tired, right? But also, this is really important. Um, and I will say in higher education, so I, my former life is I was a counselor and I did career counseling for students. And we would always talk about work values. So what are the things that you want in a job that you value? And I would say that the kinds of things that people who chose to go into academics would value, things like they want to work with other people on a group, with a team, they want work-life balance, they want stability. All of those things are being fundamentally challenged with the way things are changing. And so I think maybe for a certain kind of person, what's happening in higher education might not be that hard, but I don't think those people who like fast paced and adjusting, and you were saying like challenging problems and trying to work out systems that don't work, I don't think those are the people who are finding themselves in higher education. And so they're especially susceptible to this time where everything feels off kilter and we can't spend time with each other and we don't have any work-life balance. Um, so I think it's helpful just to say it's especially difficult for people in higher education. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so if we talk about developing stamina, what I like about this is that I think it leads us to the place where we're like, hey, some things have to change. 
And like I said, some of those things are COVID problems. They're things that have come about because of COVID. But I also think that we have less um, tolerance for things that were stupid before COVID. And now we're like, hey, we're not, we're not going to put up with that anymore. And both of those kind of areas are things that we really want to invest in. Because if we go back to running a race, when you are running, you are trying to get as efficient as possible. We don't want stupid things. We're not gonna, we don't wanna waste our energy. We're not gonna do things that don't make sense. We are trying to conserve our energy and get as efficient as possible. Yeah. And efficiency sometimes comes to doing um, things you don't wanna do well. Right. right. So you don't wanna concentrate on your breathing. You don't wanna concentrate on your steps. You wanna listen to music and just run. And you have to like, even when I'm, when I'm working out and like I'm being told to move this angle and move that angle, I'm like, this is not comfortable. This is not fun. I don't want to do this, but yeah. I do it because if not, I'm not going to get the result I want. So doing things that you don't enjoy or hard things is part of stamina and part of success. You have to do the things you don't like. Yeah, that's right. And you have to figure out a way to make those as, um, I, I don't Enjoyable know. Enjoyable as possible. Yeah. You just have to say like, this is a thing I'm going to do and I'm going to get good at it because it needs to be done. Right. It's going to change my life. So I want to go back to our hotel because this, can you please explain to us about the Oscar report and counting cars? Okay. So back in the day, um, hotels, the only way before the internet, the only way to find out what your competitor is doing, there's two ways you would do it. Um, one, you would read a reader board. So you go in and you say, uh, when you know you're in a hotel and says, okay, conference A is in room 200. Conference B is in this conference. And it has the name of the company. So you'd write down on the reader board all the names of the companies. And then you would find the contact and find out why they're not staying at my hotel. That's one way. Another way, which he was doing is you go, and this is a real way. This isn't like making fun of him. This is a real way. Yeah. I go out and count cars in the parking lot. In, that's in competitors, the competitors, right? Right. When I was when I was maybe first in this business, I remember being over in Park, Kansas, and I remember my salesperson saying, "Oh, I counted the, the cars in these two or three hotels' parking lots." So you want to see what states they're from, and you want to see how many cars are in the thing. The problem with that is it's not giving you real information you can use outside of your competitors are killing yourself. So, yeah. so that's another interesting fact that you bring up because. There's information you can use, like a reader board, and then there's information that is busy information. Like, okay, you counted the cars, you saw they were from different states. Now, what are you going to do about it? There's right. not much you can do about it because you that's don't know the specifics. Right. It's not actionable. Yeah. And so, so that's great. And so if you had more cars, you win in your mind. That's great. That helped you. But really, that's not actionable. But I never brought that up. I just said, that's great. We just don't do it that way anymore. So you, this was such a fun time because he said – I, I don't have to count cars anymore because you're giving him this other way of doing it. Right. And you said, when's the last time you counted cars? And he said, I got up early this morning and counted cars. And this is you looking at his son's like, did you know that he got up this morning? Wow, you, and, really, you really took that. I have a few more curl lines on my eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said to the sons for 40 years, he's been doing that because he's been trying to protect your future. Right. And then you helped them get more efficient because right. you were like, Hey, we have to protect this person who has shown stamina and run a good race. And now we can use technology to make this much easier. And he said, you mean I don't have to get up every morning early and count cars? And you're like, you do not have to get up. Well, you, know what? you know what? I hate, I hate when people make fun of other people for doing things that, that were successful for them. Absolutely. For example, my, when my wife, I may have mentioned this last time, when my wife started her first day of school online, she was not good at it. Like she's not a technology person and the computer wasn't working and she had a breakdown. She literally in front of me, I've never seen it that upset. And I fixed it immediately. I took care of whatever I had to take care of. But like she literally, and it's like, she was so vulnerable at that moment. It's like the last thing I'm going to do is like, like, like these, these people are coming into technology and being forced to deal with it when they're not used to it. So my wife at that moment was like, yeah, she has a computer and she knows how to use it a little bit, but she doesn't know how to run a class on it. Right. And so you have these older teachers and now and, and these older professors and people are like, well, why don't you keep it up? Why don't you keep it up? Well, let, let's give them time 
to focus on it because we kind of are the generation that we got the best of both worlds. I remember what it was like not to have a cell phone, but I also remember what it's like to have a cell phone. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Be, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I liked it better without a cell phone, but <laughs> anyway, that's just me. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do think, oh, <laughs> this is the other thing that you did for this family. They were like, you have to call to make a reservation. You're like, let's just look at the competition. Here are all of the hotels where you can book online and you guys can't. And what I like about this is that you didn't change who they were or what they were doing. You just used technology to make it easier and better for them. Right. Um, and we all need easier and better in our lives. I cannot tell you how many clients I'm talking to that are like super protective of their employees. And they're like, we got to make it simpler. We want fewer clicks. We've got to do it this way. Show us how to set up the technology because we don't have time in the middle of this crazy town marathon to mess with a bunch of inefficient, not well thought out processes. And technology is one of the ways that you can invest in yourself to make your life easier and better. Not I'll always, you, but I'll there's a lot of ways. One of the reasons I partner with you guys, because I love your technology, because it's so simple. And listen, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. Most people don't know that. I'm, I'm a systems and numbers guy. And 99% of my time, I'm not looking at numbers or systems. I'm dealing with people. But if you have the right numbers and the right systems or a way to look at the numbers, you, 99% of the time, you can teach students. When you have the wrong information, like right now, what I'm watching at the New York Board of Education, watching what the challenges my wife's having, they're changing things. It, it, it's, it's a little difficult. Because I don't, you know, but I also tell, tell everybody, you know, her friends and everybody, it's like, listen, it, it, it's, they're doing their best. Like you can't judge them for the information, the decisions they made six weeks ago. You just can't because everything's, everything's changing. changing. Yeah, that's right. Well, I would just say, um, not only to our clients, but to anybody, if you are not using technology to keep track of your COVID cases, to keep track of what's happening on your campus, to have a dashboard where you're able to go in really quickly and see, this is how many we have in isolation. Here's what we have in terms of test positive. If you are not doing that, I think where we get when we're talking about things need to change is this is a place where we say, you may have had this before COVID where you weren't using the right technology to keep track of things. This may be a COVID problem for you. You have this new group of students that you're having to manage. Whatever that looks like, you should be using technology to make this easier. So if you think about setting reminders, I don't wanna to have to go in every day and be like, where am I with all of these students and who's coming off quarantine or who do I need to check in with? I'm worried about my students. I need to have reminders to tell me what's going on with them. I need to have survey results so I can go through and see like, oh, these are the students who expected to use financial aid, but now they're not on campus. So they're not gonna be able to get that. This is a place where I think you go to administration. I think they're um, open to hearing this idea of we need to get more efficient and use technology to help us do this work because we're tired. We have been running for a really long time and we don't feel like we have the tools that we need to be able to do it well. And you know what does, you know what gets you, work doesn't get you tired, confusion gets you tired, right? Like, because when you're, when you're at the end of the day and you put in a really good day that you're happy, you taught all these students and you, they learn something and you learn something. Yes, you're tired, like you want to rest, you want to have dinner, you want to go to sleep. That makes sense. But a lot of the tired that we're feeling and a lot of the burnout that we're feeling is the confusion. And That's any so technology that can, that can help the confusion, um, you know, is, is the best. What did you say? I said, That's so good. I love that. You want to make it a bumper sticker? You got to put it in your book. <laughs> what, what did I just say? <laughs> you said work doesn't get you tired. Confusion does. Right. And I think that idea of like when you put that in, in terms of run a good race, um, it's like you were saying the other day about people aren't sad about weakness. They're not sad. That's okay. You can say like, this is hard or I don't know what's going on. But the place where you're confused and you don't have a clear idea of what your um, goals are, and you don't have a cl clear idea of who needs help and what you should be doing and what are our priorities, 
those are the days that you come home and you're just like this, this I'm exhausted today. Yeah, I yeah, felt like I, I was running like a chicken with my head off and I, and I'm just confused. Did I accomplish and, anything? And that's why, that's why you have to take control of you. Cause if you don't, that confusion will kill you. And you asked me a question, like who's the most fascinating person I've ever met in, in real life. And I said, Joe Rogan. And that seems to be a really weird answer for a guy like me. And I'll tell you why. And I've met a lot of, I've met everybody, but it yeah. seems like, and I'll tell you why it was interesting. Because I love people that have tried to pin this guy down. He's this, he's that, he's a Republican, he's a Democrat, he's a socialist. He, like, and everybody's got it wrong. He's an individual that wants to learn. I have never met anyone that has listened in, in to so many different people around the world and really listens with the intent to learn something and is not judgmental. So I've learned to be less judgmental and to be more open-minded because of people like him. So I find him fascinating because if you're trying to pin that guy down of who he is, good luck. Because he doesn't know who he is because he's always trying to get better. He's always trying to – so I don't agree with a lot of things he says, but I agree within the spirit he says it. He never says anything to be malicious or mean or he's just – like he's a comedian, first of all. So if you take some of the stuff he says, you got to understand he's a comedian. Then he's, you know, he's, he, he's into science. He's into everything. He's into, I'm not a hunter. I don't want to kill anything. He kills things, but he eats the meat. So people are like, oh, he's a hunter. He kills people. But then I learned through listening to a person like that, most animals in the wild die a horrible death. They <laughs> die at the hands of another animal or of starvation. Right. So he's, he's doing, he's doing them a favor in the most, you know, uh, not in a mean way, in, in a very peaceful way, and trying to kill them in a way, and then he eats the meat. So my point being is, do be always try to get better and always be good to yourself and always be open minded. And it's not the administration fault. It's not this fault. It's not that for. It's not. It's 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 like even if it is, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. What are you yeah. going to do? All that's going to do is kill you. What are you going to do? It's his fault. It's our fault. It's his fault. It's our fault. So what are you going to do with that? Yeah, that's right. And um, I think uh, on your show this morning, they were talking about um, this idea of considering how you take care of yourself. And you were saying like, hey, you need to think about the people you're around because people who are around you who are negative and complaining and that's toxic for you. That is, we don't want to be around people like that. We want to be around encouragers and people who are helpful, right? I, I'm giggling because it usually takes, and I didn't really realize that until you were saying it. It usually takes maybe 35 seconds for negative people to get real nervous around me because they know, they know I'm about to, I'm, something's <laughs> about to happen. And so, yeah, listen, negativity is just, it's, it's worse than sugar. It'll kill you faster than sugar. It is so poisonous. Negativity is the most poisonous thing out there because life is hard, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. But we signed up. We signed the contract. We, here we are. <laughs> here we are, man. What are you going to do with that? I got 10,000 days. And if I keep saying things are negative, things are negative. And I grew up in a negative household. So I get that. I grew up with someone who said, nothing will ever happen. Nothing good will ever happen. People are against you. People are against us. You don't understand. Yeah. You didn't grow up with a father. You're never going to get anywhere. And like, so I grew up with negativity. So I am literally more allergic to negativity than I am cats. And I'm very allergic to cats. <laughs> yeah. And I think part of the way we develop stamina is we look around us and we take care of ourselves and we say, um, I'm not going to stop, but I am going to take care of myself and I'm not going to be in spaces that are not healthy for me. And I'm not going to be around people who are not healthy for me. And um, I'm not going to have a schedule that is not healthy for me. All of those little details about how you're living your life that you actually do have control over, mm -hmm. that you don't have to be confused about, you can stop and assess those pieces and say, that person is not healthy for me. This space is not healthy. This schedule does not work. That priority, I don't value this thing. I'm not going to do it anymore. It does give you the ability to then strip it down and say, I'm going to keep working hard at this thing because I value this and here's how I'm going to protect yeah, you know, and then People say to me a lot, they're like, yeah, anything that's good. You're an entrepreneur. You can do whatever you want. No, I've worked for people most of my career and I still work for people. I, I work for clients, all, all my clients. I yeah. work for them. They don't work for me. And so I always have people, bosses that I'm dealing with. And, but you have to make a decision, Right. If I don't like the client I'm working with, I just don't sign the contract again. If I am working in an environment that I'm not happy working in, 
I will make a plan of escape. That doesn't mean you leave tomorrow, but make your escape. Like Joe Rogan just moved to Austin, Texas because the, the crowds and just the, the things that he's seeing in California just wasn't working for him anymore. And he, in a month, he just took his podcast, everything went right to Austin, built, built wow. a ranch and whatever. And, and he, he changed his environment. Now, it may be worse. He may not like it, but it may be better. But he changed yeah. his environment. So, so one of the things I've done, even when I did the show, is I changed my environment. People, I'm a professor. I want to get tenure. Want, yeah, absolutely. And maybe get that. So then you have to basically say, I need stamina to get through this environment. And then when you get through it, make sure you have a game plan to exit. Where, but don't like, enjoy the moment that you're, in, that you're in, even if it's not exactly where you want to be. Yeah, that's right. So I think that vision forward where you say, I don't have to be confused. I don't have to do things that are unhealthy for me. I have a vision forward. And also today's not a bad day. I might come home tired, but you know, I had a pretty good day. I did do good work. I saw people I liked. I got to have some ice cream, whatever that looks like. Both the, I don't have to put up with unhealthy, but I can have stamina. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing, but I might slow down and have an orange slice. And I might, you know, take a minute to assess what's going on. This lady, 92, she ran a, a marathon. That's amazing. And she probably did it faster than I did. <laughs> and well, she looks like she, she looks like she's 60. Yeah. And she looks very joyful, doesn't she? I mean, she's not like dying at the end of the finish line. She's just like, I did this thing. That's awesome. And you know why, why she was joyful? She's probably joyful because she knows that how hard it was, but people got it worse than me. And one of the things like, you know, you think you have a bad day. Well, somebody just got COVID. Someone just went in ICU. Someone doesn't have food on the table. Someone lost their business. They can't feed their children. They lost their home. They're in a homeless shelter or they're on the street. So this, those are a lot of bad things. And those people, and I think I've said this uh, before, is when I asked a, a, a reporter, asked a homeless person, Nicole Allen, who was on the boardwalk, sleeping on the bench. Like, what would you, you like, you sleep here every night. You like sleeping here? He goes, look at my view. <laughs> I couldn't afford this if I tried. Like, but, but the point is, like, look at what I'm looking at. Like, yeah, this sucks. I'm sleeping on the bench. But look at my view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and I think, I, I think mindset is everything. And that's exactly what I was going to say. It. It's mindset's at, everything. At the end of the day, it comes down to your stamina is about doing hard things and the mindset that says we will not stop we will keep going and we will find joy and, and value and also what's the choice the right. choice is negativity or positivity that's the choice and people are like well you're a positive person i have fought this my whole life yeah. i have i have fought the demon of negativity my whole life every day i fight it and i punch it in the face every single day i'm like i'm not going there i'm not going to take that extra drink i'm not going to play that extra poker hand i'm not going to stay out later i am not going to drive my car faster i'm not going to stay in the depression i am not going to do that so i am pulled by negativity every single day of my life like everybody is yeah. positivity and negativity you have to choose and i don't like negativity so it's a pretty easy choice and it's really funny to think about like stamina is hard. So w when it's hard to say, I'm not going to be negative. I'm going to choose positive. I'm going to fight the fight. I'm going to, it's hard. That's stamina. That's what it is. Like it is a difficult thing to do. And it always is a wrestle. It's not like stamina comes easily. No, it doesn't. Right? If you don't yeah. take care of, if you, I, I am a proponent. If you don't take care of your mental and physical health, everything else is harder. And, and we don't talk about that enough in this country. Like, well, COVID is a problem in this country. Okay, it's a problem everywhere. But we're not talking about your immune system. We're not talking about eating vitamins. We're not talking about eating healthy. We're not talking about keeping yourself, if you do get it, that you're in the best shape of, of, of being able to fight it. We don't talk about that. Yeah. We talk about, you know, all kinds of controversies, but we don't talk about you're responsible for taking care of yourself and God forbid something happens. Again, I ran a marathon because if I got paralyzed, I didn't want to sit in a wheelchair saying, I'm not going to get mad. I wish I had. Yeah. What am I going to do? God forbid that happened to me. Am I going to get mad and say, oh my God, it's not fair? They're not fair, police. Get away, <laughs> get away from me. Just don't come, don't come anywhere near me with the not fair. Believe. Yeah, that's hopefully that's something everyone learned when they were little kids. Like we're not doing, no, we don't, most people don't, fair. most people have not learned that. It's not fair. Most people have not learned that. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of time for not fair. Okay. So I'm always trying to give um, our clients and our attendees some action items. The first one is I would just say, please don't stop. Please don't stop. Take care of yourself. But stamina is about doing hard things and putting one foot in front of the other. 
And there are things that you can control that you can make decisions about people you're around, processes, spaces, things you do. Please um, assess how to be more efficient and to save your energy for the things that are important, things like mental health, things like taking care of your family and making sure that you're present. I will also tell you that I'm so happy because I think Thanksgiving is the first time since March where our higher education professionals have some space to not be working. So all summer they were working and trying to re-recruit and make sure they were gonna have a class and increase retention. And, and that's not a place that they usually have had to be. So higher education professionals, I am telling you that you have um, Thanksgiving coming and your job is to plan some rest and restoration for that break because it, you have not, I know you have not had a break. I know you're all exhausted. I know you don't feel like there's a pause. You have a month and a half to carve out some time to spend with your family and people who love you and just take a minute to step back because- And, and we, don't recognize burn, we don't recognize burnout until it's too late. And, and people are like, well, how do you burn out? You're, you're in your house. You're, 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 you're comfortable. You're probably not wearing pants and you're, and you're working and you're getting paid. Well, I want to read that report that we were talking about before because it's creeping up on me and I was burnt out when I was in the military. And so I know that feeling and it's, it's not when I like people like last year, I traveled so much and I, and when I had three shows going, I had my business going, people were like, Oh my God, you must be so stressed. I was the least stressed I've ever been because I was doing stuff that really fed me. The one thing yeah. I would say you talk about takeaways I think is really important is do something. If you say to yourself, I'd love to do that. Everybody's like, I would love to do that. Do it. Do that one thing that you would love to do. Do it. Like photography. Yeah. I, I love photography. And I said, when I retire, I'll get into photography. I'm actually doing it more. I'm actually going out on the beach in the morning and I'm taking shots just for my own enjoyment. I don't even post on Instagram half the time. So sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't. And, and so do it. Do that one thing that feeds your soul. You can't get that from your spouse. You can't get that from your kids. You can't get that from work. You can't get that from money. The only thing you get that from is, well, I really would like to do that. Then do it. Now's the time to do that thing. And I think we said last time that is a, that has become a discipline. That is not an indulgence. It is not, wow, I'm like doing something for myself. I'm saying like, you need to be disciplined to do things for yourself so that you don't find yourself in a position of um, burnout. Um, okay, I have a bunch of resources. You guys will get a, a copy of this video so you don't have to take notes feverishly. We have all of our Ferris Resources tools. You can go there. We also have partnered with Macmillan Learning and their iClicker Insights. This is an awesome tool about how you can interview or survey students to find out what their experience is, what do they need, what do they feel overwhelmed about. Lots of ways for you to get connected to that. We also partnered for some student videos about how to do time management and motivation. Um, so I think that will be really powerful. Those are free for you guys. So if you have students who are struggling with those things, please send them those resources. And then the last three um, that I'm just gonna go through really quickly are the temperature scanner, the um, fogger. Anthony, you have a new exciting tool. You know, you guys are so, I, I was like, there's no way they missed this. I was like, I was going to mention it just now. I was like, I, knowing them, they found it. So why don't you tell them about the tool? Well, this is a robot. Do you, show, that, do you, have, the, do you have the video or do you have the picture of it? I think we do. I think we do. Matt's going to try to pull it up. It's a robot that hotels have in the room. They're running. It's kind of autonomous. It goes around and it um, sanitizes everything. And then... You said the other day, like, if I'm in the room and I'm going to dinner, I can program it to do it while I'm gone, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so what it is, it's called CBOT. It's from Cirque Plus, And um, I'm helping them uh, with it because I truly believe in it. And it's plugged into the property management system. So when the guest checks out, the problem is housekeepers have been getting sick. So when the guest checks out, the robot knows that the, the housekeeper's out of the room. Everybody's out of the room. It cleans the room sanitize it. Then the housekeeper comes in, cleans the sheets and really cleans the room deeply. And then when she leaves, the, the robot knows again, she's left the room, she's gone, seals the room, cleans it again. And now it's good to go. So it's- Can I show you? I don't have it in the, but this is what it looks like. Okay. It's yeah, a me. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. Just 
And what it's awesome. doing is, it, I don't know how you're doing that, but it, it's spraying a chemical that is used in, hold on. Um, it's uh, spraying a chemical that's used in um, hospitals and surgery rooms. And um, you can literally, um, it, 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 I can spray you in the face with it and it's, you can wiggle off your lips and you're not going to get sick. So it was important to me when they came to me because it helps housekeepers. Yeah. Uh, it makes housekeepers feel safer going into the room. And you can use it in a classroom. And it's uh, actually, I think, one of the major board of educations, uh, I don't want to say what state, um, is going to buy it soon. So, if you, awesome. so, so if you want people to go through, like if you have classes and you, you, you can spend less time and money sanitizing the classroom by having this robot come in. Programmed. Two minutes and it's clean and it's dry and boom, you can go about your business. That's awesome. Well, I know lots of our schools will love that because many of them are asking faculty or students to stay after and to clean it. And this is, to your point about housekeepers, that's not healthy or safe. And so having this automatic, I mean, it's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. It's, so. it's, they, they worked. And you know what? I didn't realize it, but the company, when it came to me, uh, they said, you know, this is your idea. I was like, I don't know if you saw that. I was like, no. he said this on the, on the video. I was like, what do you mean it was my idea? He goes, you told me that um, 46 housekeepers lost their lives during COVID in New York City. I said, yeah, but I also said it may have not been in the room. I'm not sure. He said, yeah, but when you said that, it just hit something in me. It's like, that's right. When the housekeepers are in the room, they're the first line defense. Like, we need to get something to clean. So from that day that I said that to the day that we introduced it, it was sparked by a conversation me and him had. And I've, I felt very honored that's by that. That's awesome. And, and he's invented 250 products. So if anybody's going to do it, this guy's going to do it. That's really, really cool. Um, the last thing that I want to show you before we are done <laughs> Excuse Are you me. stalking me? Excuse me. Help me understand this. So last time we talked, you were like, cats is delicatessen, the best food ever. And then I saw this and I was like, I can't believe it. It made my mouth water. So was yeah, it? You know, it's so funny. Talk about photography, right? I had, I had the photographer's moment there. I was like, do I shoot the, the place or do I just shoot the ticket? And the people that know, no. I was so happy to see the ticket. I was so happy when I saw it. It's, so, it's so funny that I, I, pet, I, I was walking and I said, don't forget to get the ticket. And of course, I forgot to get the ticket. The guy's <laughs> yelling at me and, I'm, and I have deaf, as you know. So the guy's yelling at me and I'm standing getting my pastrami and he has to come over and tap me on the shoulder. He goes, dude, you got to get the ticket. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm deaf. I, can't, I really can't <gasps> I hear you. <laughs> but the, but the, the pastrami is so good. <laughs> Did you have cream soda or did you have celery soda or what did you do? Listen, if, 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 I, if you go there and don't have pastrami on rye with cream soda, you, you have to be um, taken out of this country. Okay. All right. I'm just making sure. I just want to make sure that you yeah. have it was, a, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was great to go and know it was open. It was, yeah, the chairs weren't there and the tables weren't there, but it was great. It looks exactly the way it did when I was seven years old. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's chaos. The place is chaos. <laughs> it's crazy. Like the system shouldn't work and it just works brilliantly. Yeah, well, I was really happy to see that. Um, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. I would just say, Anthony, I want you to use your tagline. I am going to tell you that right now I am working really hard on developing stamina and also on running a good race so that I don't look back and feel disappointed in myself. What's your tagline, Anthony? Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to spend time with you guys. Have a great day.